don't worry about them. I just go, I just go up and go to sleep. Someone says they put a curse on me, I don't worry about it. But you try to remove it? No. Why should I try to remove it when you can't come near me? A thousand shall fall on my right hand and ten thousand on my left and they should not come nigh unto me. So why would I need to remove something that can't get to me? As soon as, it can, as soon as they put a curse on me, it, it bounces off me and goes back on them. And they suffer. Okay. We are called to success. We are called to excellence. That's what we are called to do. We are called first of all to success and we are called to excellence. And, and a Christian, a child of God, should never settle for failure and we should always aim for excellence in all that we do. Let me tell you, friends, success is not having the best of everything. Success is doing the best with what you've got. I have preached in countries where they didn't have very much. But they were not failures, they were success. I have been in areas where they never had no electric, never had no gas. Every morning when I wanted a bath, I had to go down the river and bath in the river. When I wanted to wash my clothes, I went down the river with soap and scrubbed them. I've seen Britain didn't know very much that man had to preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Success is not in how much material you have. There can be success. But I want to tell you, friends, you, you can be successful with what you've got, even if you don't. I have known people that have got a lot, but they're failures. They're failures. I've known millionaires that own many airplanes to commit suicide. Their life is messed up. They are a complete failure. And yet I've known people that have next to nothing and make a success. They've got a successful marriage. Man, there are some people that have got millions of pounds and they can't keep the same wife for more than two years. But I've known people that don't have very much, but they're a success in their marriage. They're a success in their family and their children have grown to honour and glorify God. We are called to success. We are called to be excellent. But we are called also to be peacemakers. Peacemakers. As a Christian, they both go together. A peacemaker, according to the Encarta World Dictionary, means somebody who establishes peace. Somebody who brings about peace and reconciliation between others. Let me tell you, the mark of a true child of God is one that when they come into a church, they bring peace, they bring reconciliation. In 36 years of ministry, I've known people that as soon as they come into a church, all they can do is bring conflict. All they can do is bring divisions. My wife knows what I'm talking about. I was pastoring a church in Nottingham. We had two people. They have been to every single church in Nottingham and they found fault with that church. They come in there, lovely, wonderful service, and now it was my turn. They now came to my church. So now it was my turn to suffer. And it wasn't very long before they started to find fault. You know, there are some people that can, that can find fault in everything. They never do anything, but they find fault with everything you do. They criticise everything you do. And one as a good friend of mine, Talking about offerings, he said, one thing Pastor Mickey Rick, I've always noticed. Moaners don't give and givers don't moan. <laughs> then he came to me. So I, I said, before you start, let me ask you a question. You went to this church, what happened? You went to that church, what happened? And he took me through. I said, no, you can't. I said, what about the rest of the people in that church? Are they still there? Yes. Oh, that's what happened there? Yes. So I said, now you come to my church. Does it, that maybe it hasn't dawned on you that the problem is not with me. The problem is not with the other church. Maybe you are the problem. <laughs> so he said to me, do you know we are the biggest tight players in your church? And they were. And they said, if we leave, the 
church will die. I said, if you are keeping this church alive, if it is you that is keeping this church alive, we deserve to die. <laughs> but if God, is, if God has called me, if I am a man of God, and if I am here because God has called me, the church will survive. Jesus said upon this book, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. But I'm staying. And what I'm staying, we're building into the church what I want in the church. Uh, what I believe God wants me to have in the church, I should say. The Christians, to turn Christian, success is only success when it is done God's way. When it is done in a way that honors and glorifies God. Uh, Joshua 1 8, he said, talking about success, he said, the book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, that thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to his written. Success to a Christian is one that brings success based on biblical principles and biblical ethics. This is very different to the world system of success. The world system of success is get to the top no matter who you have to tread on on the way up. Destroy the competition. Wipe out the competition. Don't matter who you destroy, who you walk on, who you hurt, that is the world's way to get to the top. And the sad thing is that many Christians practice that. Many Christians practice that. The amount of people that I know that have started churches by causing a split in someone else's church. A pastor invites a pretty church to come and bless the church and they end up abusing the church and, and undermining the pastor in front of the congregation. That is not the Christian way. The Christian way is not so much who we tread on to get to the top but a Christian is helping and edifying and comforting and strengthening others and the wife to the top. Because when we, when a Christian goes to the top, he don't want to see a lot of hurt people. When a Christian gets to the top, he wants to see the people that he's helped and strengthened on the way up. And he looks back and he sees a healthy people. There are some people that make themselves look good by trying to make everybody else look bad. They undermine everybody else to make themselves look good. We are called to be peacemakers. Jesus taught that leadership is serving. Jesus said in the, the well teacher's leadership is you bow down to me. Jesus taught leadership when I bow down to you. Jesus, that was a leader, set an example of leadership. When he as a leader got down and washed the saints' feet, when he fed the multitude, then they were hungry. Jesus, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 23, verse 11, I'm writing down, I'm not for it. Matthew 23, 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. For he that is greatest among to be your servant. Matthew 23, 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he shall humble himself shall be exalted. Let me tell you, friends, I have never ever in my 36 years of ministry seen a successful pastor who first didn't learn to serve. Who first was not a good servant. If you, are not, if you are not fit to serve, you will never be fit to lead. Or someone said if you're too big to serve, you're too, you're too small to be a leader. Every good, successful leader that I have seen in the house of God started off by serving other people. Jesus. As we, as we make success our aim and excellent our goal, we 
we must do so as peacemakers. I'll say that again. As we make success our aim and excellence our goal, we must do so as peacemakers. Romans 14 verse 19, Paul is saying, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherein one may edify another. So notice that as Christians we are always seeking to be peaceful, we are always seeking to edify somebody else. Do you know, one of the things I always notice at conventions, maybe not in this church, but I've not been around many of conventions, but I have seen in some conventions, everything's about self, it's about me. Can I sing? Can I preach? Can I exalt? Oh, I, I can study it when someone says to me, I'd love to hear that sister sing. I'd love to hear that brother sing, but it's always me, me, me. Living in peace does not mean being passive and accepting everything that comes our way and allowing others to walk on us. I say that again, living in peace does not mean that we have to let others abuse us and walk on us. A lot of people need to learn the difference between humility and stupidity. I believe in being humble, I don't believe in being stupid. Jesus was the most humble man that ever lived. Jesus, what Jesus was peace manifested in flesh. He is the Prince of Peace. And yet Jesus stood up to the scribes and the Pharisees and called them a bunch of hypocrites. Jesus walked into the temple and turned over the money changers. I was preaching one time and someone said to me, Pastor McKinley, you've got so much hate. I said, that's right, you, you've got it all in one. You're supposed to be a person of love, that's right, you've got that right as well. You see, friends, you cannot have perfect love unless you've got perfect hate. Now I'm going to get some funny looking us like that. So I better explain. Because I've seen some of you looking at me kind of weird. What did he say? Well, let me explain. You cannot have true love unless you have true hate. Because if you love God, you're going to hate the devil. And if you love godliness, you're going to hate ungodliness. And if you love babies, you're going to hate abortions. We have to love the things that God loves and hate the things that God hates. God is a God of love, but God is also a God that gets angry. God that hates the Bible says he hates all workers of iniquity in Psalms 11. So yes, we have love. But we have to love what God loves and hate what God hates. It's not allowing others to walk on us. We are, I'll tell you one thing, James, we are not going to let people tell this church how now we should worship and when we should worship. No Muslim is going to lay down the law and tell us how we should worship our God. Amen. We will not surrender. We will not give up. But living in peace does get victory. But it, it means handling things the right way. I never forget I heard the story of a woman in America. Her husband said to her, said to his wife, you're not going to church today. To become a Christian, he wasn't. He hated her going to church and he said, you're not going to church today. She said, darling, you are the head of the house and I must obey you in all things. But I cannot obey you when you go contrary to the word, when you are telling me to do something that is contrary to the word of God. I must, first of all, obey God. She said, therefore, I'm going to church. The man stood at the door and said, I'm standing at this door and you won't go out. She said, darling, you can stand at the 